Saints, thanks. No points were scored. There wasn't a rebound put on the stat sheet or even a category for it. But one of the most memorable moments from game one between the Spurs and Sun, no doubt that Tony Parker, Steve Nash collision. With Nash on the bench for a crucial 45 seconds down the stretch, San Antonio got the win. So what condition is Nash in going into game two? For that answer and a check on some of the other playoff series, we turn to Suns veteran Jalen Rose. Jalen, we talk to reporters. We can talk to everybody else. You are there every moment. How did Nash look yesterday to you? He looked real good in practice. He worked real hard as well as the team. He has sti six stitches in his nose. He'll be playing with a Band-Aid on his nose, no mask. And uh, hopefully he's playing like the two-time MVP because we really need tonight's game. Well, he's talking like a two-time MVP. We talked about this yesterday. He kind of called you guys out for not playing with heart all the time. And then he backed it up at practice saying, I'm at a loss for why we think that we can go out there and not out-hustle the Spurs and outwork them and win games. What is that response in the locker room then to that? The response is we got to bring it in game two. That's just the bottom line. Our leader's ready to go. We're excited about tonight's game. We understood coming into the San Antonio series that it was going to be a long, grueling series. We prepared for that. They're a tremendous team. Obviously, Tim Duncan and Tony Parker both had over 30 points in game one. Hopefully, we can find a way to limit both of those guys, especially Tony Parker with his penetration, try to keep Manu Ginobili quiet. Michael Finley stepped up. But the bottom line, it's all about us. If we create a tempo, we create an energy, and we create a furor in our building, I think our fans and our players are going to put us over the top. Is this a game that you guys are calling a must-win game too? Yes, it is. It has to be. You can't go to San Antonio, expect to win two games, especially after you drop two on your home floor. So I know you hear the cliche of must-wins <laughs> a lot of time in sports, but this is a game that the Phoenix Suns truly must win. Well, you look at the Utah series. Uh, they got their game one win over Golden State. Maybe the favorites for some, the underdog. What's gotten into Carlos Boozer? Carlos Boozer has been playing this way all season. He's probably been the best power forward from the beginning of the season up until his injury till now. I mean, here's a guy that had 20 rebounds last night. He's scoring points. He's knocking down the mid-range jump shot. He's running the floor. And uh, I think he's the guy when you talk about playing against the Golden State Warriors that may end up being the difference because his power play is probably going to be too much. But you got to give that scrappy Golden State Warriors team credit. Came down to the last play of the game. Steven Jackson had a shot to actually win the game. So I see that series being an exciting one. And uh, for an A seed, I think the Golden State Warriors really keeping us on the edge of our seats. And that's good for NBA basketball. Out East, not exactly exciting between the Bulls and Pistons, but their series is going on and the Cavs and Nets. Which team is the best one left out of those four? Detroit Pistons, they have to be. What about the only team in the playoffs this season that have not lost a game? That's the Detroit Pistons. They're professional. They have, along with the Phoenix Suns, the best starting five in the league. I've been saying it all season. Chris Webber and Tayshawn Prince, my boy Chris Webber, stepped up <laughs> and had a great game yesterday. I mean, Chauncey Billis and Rip Hamilton are consistent as they come, and they just never lose a beat. I mean, they just find ways to get it done. Chicago is a predominantly young team. They're going through this playoff experience for the second time, but anytime you go against an experience-laden Detroit team, you're going to have your work cut out for you. And hopefully if you're a Chicago fan, Kurt Heinrich can find a way to get his game going. 0 for 7. He was, I played with Kurt Heinrich during his rookie year, so I'm rooting for Kurt to have a uh, big-time game three. But I see the Pistons finding a way to come out of that series. And the New Jersey and the Cleveland Cavs series, I mean, you got two high flyers, Vince Carter and LeBron James. Two guys to keep you on the edge of your seat with the plays that they make. But I think Cleveland probably is going to be a deeper team with home court advantage to find a way to come out of that series. Jalen, you mentioned you played with some of these young guys, these young Bulls. Do they have mentally what it takes to get back in this series down 0-2? I think they have mentally what it takes, not just against the Detroit Pistons. Because, they, <laughs> because they've been there, they've done that. I give Ben Wallace a lot of credit for the way he played yesterday. How many times can the Chicago Bulls go into the halftime and say, Ben Wallace was our leading scorer. That lets you know that they were sort of out of wax offensively. Luau Deng is probably one of my favorite young three men in the league. The way he knocks down mid-range shots and he runs the floor. But Tayshaun Prince is, a, is up for that battle. And I just think that the Chicago Bulls are probably going to be overmatched with veteran experience in this, in this series. But I think it's going to be in an exciting series. I don't think it's going to be a sweep. But I think they're going to find a way at the end of the day, the Detroit Pistons, to find a way to come out of that series. Well, and a Detroit guy, so I have to point out, the Cavs <laughs> haven't lost yet in the playoffs either. But Detroit is your team, and you've been busy playing too. So I just wanted to point that out there. They've got that with the Pistons as well. Jalen, good luck tonight.
Thank you very much. And actually, Detroit six and zero, Cleveland's five and zero. Cleveland got to keep it up. <laughs> All right, Jalen, we'll <laughs> talk to you soon. We still have much more coming up here on First Take. It's a baseball doubleheader ahead. We're going to go around the horn from New York to Seattle, everywhere in between, to see what is going on in the bigs. Speaking of bigs, the big fellas are going to take center court, let it all hang out for their team as we look at last night's top plays. You're watching First Take.